Dr. Steele, or Shelby, as you asked us to call you, can you tell us about critical race theory and where it comes from? Well, boy, how much time do we have? <laughs> uh, I'll try to do that. I'll try to stay out of the weeds. As, as, uh, uh, it's a, like a lot of theoretical issues, you can, it's easy to get lost. I think in a, in, in a broad sense, a lot of this started in the 60s when America, in a sense, owned up to um, it, the centuries of persecution of black Americans. And that we, what we did not have failed really to absorb about that moment in the 1960s, around 64 when the Civil Rights Bill was passed, what we failed to, to, uh, under, to really accept and explore is that when you confess to something like that, that horrible, then there's a, sh- a profound shift in moral authority and therefore in power. Um, and what white America and is lost at that moment, though, and this is the, the irony of it, though white America did probably the greatest moral um, transformation, achieved that transformation in the 60s, uh, that it should be forever proud of and that testifies to our greatness, uh, it also left us with a weakened moral authority when it came to enforcing difficult principles, mor- morality, and so forth. Uh, all of a sudden, people around the world could say, well, you've admitted it yourself. You were racist. You, it was Jim Crow. There was slavery. You did all that. You, you denigrated these human beings. And, and so, therefore... All of the great things that you stand for uh, and have, you know, labored over the millennium to achieve uh, are tarnished and are invalid uh, because they were built, because they were contaminated by that evil that you practiced over that period of time. This, it seems to me, is the situation out of which critical race theory comes. Um, white America suddenly needed a a way to claim to to reclaim some of the moral authority it lost by confessing to its sins. Uh, and so, white America became, I think, preoccupied with redeeming itself. President Johnson right away came up with the War on Poverty, the Great Society, Affirmative Action, School Busing, Public Housing, uh, on and on and on. Trillions of dollars spent in social programs, almost all of which failed, but trillions of dollars spent in order to redeem, to give America, to reclaim enough moral authority for our government to function. Uh, and we've we've wrestled with that problem um, since the, since again since the '60s, 60 years now. Um, so that that is that vacuum of moral authority that we lost in the '60s, that opened the way for bizarre things like socialism and critical race theory uh, and so forth, uh, because they come in and they say. Well, look, all of Western civilization is fraudulent. The Enlightenment is fraudulent because it ignored all of this evil that was being practiced, colonialism, imperialism around the world, racism, segregation, Jim Crow in in, in America. How can it be a great civilization when it's done all that? Here we are taking uh, that that doubt, that self-doubt that America now lives with. We have this moral self-doubt. And Dr. Steele, what you just explained is extremely, extremely helpful because to me, as we've talked about in this program oftentimes, you go back in time and you go back to the time that we threw God out of our schools, took the Ten Commandments off the wall, we replaced that moral authority and into that void and that vacuum then rushes something to fill it, which is what you're describing right here. But I would like you to do this. I would like to hear your definition. We're using the terms critical race theory. Now, it means something 
but I'm not sure it means the same thing to everybody who's listening. And I don't know that I have heard a really succinct definition. Would you define that? Critical meaning what? Race, how does that really fit? And then theory, how's that come in? Explain that to us because the president obviously has made an issue about this and we've heard about it, but I don't think most people probably really understand it. Define that for us, please. Nobody, absolutely nobody can answer the question you just asked me. And that's really the point of critical race theory. It has no meaning. It means what I say it means. And what I want you to do is I want you to set up a program in your corporation or your university or your public school system and do this and do that and, 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 uh, uh, because, because I just want that. Well, I, I, I can't. I have to give some sort of an excuse. So it's, it's critical race theory. Uh, it's, it's a philosophy that, of course, absolutely nobody understands. No, if, if it was clear enough to be understood, it would have been attacked long, long ago. But it survives by, the, by this pretentiousness that is, it's a sophisticated, um, postmodern is the phrase they like to use, postmodern analysis of society. Uh, and we're all sort of supposed to be intellectually intimidated by it. Uh, but in reality, it's nothing. The word critical um, has no relationship to race. What is it? What's the relation? What do you mean, critical race? And in theory, what does theory mean? Nothing. There's no, there's no body of, of, of insight uh, behind it. Um, and so, but again, it is a perfect, therefore, perfect pretext for me to presume to to grab for power, and to to engineer socially engin engineer the world in a way that that makes sense to me that I want. And you know what, Shelby? When I was studying Hegel and German idealism, and the reason that I didn't get into a deeper definition of that during this program, because as you said, it's so expansive, and basically. You can shape your own reality and make words mean whatever you want them to mean. And so because it's so fluid with the critical race theory and to your question, Sam, it can shift. So, for instance, if I'm a black person and I walk into a store, if the clerk comes to me first and says, can I help you? I can say, oh, the reason you came to me first was because you're afraid I'm going to steal something. But then if you didn't come to me first and you went to a white person, then I could say, well, the reason you didn't come to me first is because you're biased against me and you don't think I can afford to purchase anything. And so, Shelby, as you said so eloquently, it's fluid. It doesn't have any concrete, definitive thing. So it's a perfect tool that I can use that's very fluid and use it to suit my purposes. And you really don't have a defense against it if you buy into the premise that I'm laying out, you know, that, hey, critical race theory is real and white America and white supremacy is racist. And so it's very important, I think, this is conversation because so many people will grasp that reality and say, well, it must be true because they're saying it with so much purpose and so definitely. But in reality, it's just a very abstract term that is used as a weapon to shape and mold culture in the way that they want it to.